Hello and thank you for tuning in to Democracy Under Threat. I am Vanelda Harris and again today I have Bishop Juan Edgel here with me and we're here to give you an update on what took place yesterday with regards to the Guyana Elections Commission and the GCOM chair who would have voted against the motions put forward by the People's Progressive Party Civics Commissioners to ensure that the Guyanese people can be able to have a fair, transparent, and credible recount process. Um, Bishop, can you give your comments on the final work plan that the chair would have decided on yesterday? Well, thank you very much, and thank you for having me in the program, and greetings to all of your viewers and listeners. It has been two weeks of meetings and more meetings and lengthy meetings of GCOM without agreement. Yesterday, the PPPC nominated commissioners armed themselves with 10 motions that basically spoke to specific issues to bring them to finality, to remove all of the bugbears and the barricades, and to ensure that we can get a transparent recount on the road. We learned that at yesterday's meeting, those motions were tabled, I guess debated and spoken to, and then voted on for decisions to ensure that the order that GCOM is seeking to gazette to facilitate the recount takes into consideration the views and the positions that were being expressed by the PDPC. Largely was the issue of transparency. Now, let me first of all indicate and debunk the lies and the deceitful statements that are being made by surrogates and minions of the AP and UAFC. The People's Progressive Party Civic wants a recount of the votes. We're not hiding from a recount. We are the ones who have been advocating for the recount. So the first thing that we need to nail is this fake news, Facebook propaganda types. Who wants to suggest that Chad Dio and the PPPC, they're hiding from a recount? We want a recount. And the reason why we want a recount is because we know fully well the statements of polls that were tabulated by us came about as a result of a count that was taken at each place of poll. And when we tabulated all of our statements of poll, including Region 4, it indicates that we won these elections handsomely. We had the mingo, bingo, lingo situation at Ashman's building and the whole electoral cycle was thrown into a crisis. We sought first of all to get Mr. Mingo to comply with the law in tabulating the statements of poll. When it was clear that the rigging machine was at work, 
heavily supported by APNU AFC officials, the GCOM commissioners, and senior and technical staff of GCOM, we knew the way to solve this problem once and for all is to have a transparent process where all the votes can be recounted and declared. Of course, in the first instance, the problem was with region number four. So we thought that if you get a recount of all of the boxes of region number four, we will be able to bring solution to this matter. It is instructive for us to be reminded that all of the contesting political parties minus the APNU AFC requested a recount of the votes of region number four. All political parties minus the APNU AFC. Who are the beneficiaries of Mingo Bingo Lingo? His rig sheet. The same Mingo using his statutory office as a returning officer refused all the political parties a recount of the ballots of region 4 and there were elements within GCOM who were forcing to have the fraudulently declared results of May 5th which was annulled and voided by the courts and then the other Mingo's declaration of the 13th, which was equally disastrous as the May 5th declaration to be used. So we have been advocating the way to solve this problem and to determine the legitimate winner of these elections, the March 2nd, uh, 2020 general elections is a record. And we created a framework under which this recount must take place. Because of what we saw at Ashman's building at May, on May 5th, and then what we saw at GCOM's High Street location on May 13th, we knew that a recount must not just be done in a dark closed door environment. It must be done properly scrutinized with the maximum levels of transparency. The motions that were taken to GCOM yesterday morning by our nominated commissioners were motions to ensure maximum transparency of a recount process. There were not motions that were put there to stop a recount or to prevent a recount. It's to enhance and to advocate what we were always saying. We want a recount. We want an, a credible result. We want the recount to be done in a transparent manner. And we want declarations to be done according to the law. So, these 10 motions were tabled. If you will allow me to talk about these motions Vanilla, and what were the decisions that were made, it will help all Guyanese to understand what we are playing with. Now, GCOM is constructed of three um, government nominated commissioners and three opposition nominated commissioners. So you have a 3-3 three, three equation. The chairperson is supposed to be the tiebreaker. The person who stands for fairness, who is supposed to be just, who is to be supposed to be above the political fray, and whose actions and interventions must not have political considerations, but must only have the considerations of upkeeping, upholding the Constitution, the laws of Ghana, and ensuring fairness. 
So let's talk about what the PPP asked for and what was the response they got at GECO. You will recall that here on your program and on other programs, I think with Romel Rupnarain and Eddie Lane, I was speaking to the issue of the chief elections officer. Apart from all of the returning officers got copies of statements of poll, original statements of poll. Now what's the purpose why Mr. Lowenfield got copies of all these SOPs? It is because GCOM has created that in its architecture to ensure there are checks and balances. So Mr. Lowenfield, if there is any dispute, if there is any contention, if there is any quarrel, should come to the commission with all the statements of poll and show the commissioners these are the 2,300 plus statements of poll that I have collected and these are the figures. He has not done that. He has never done that and he has refused to do that. So the, one of the motions that was put yesterday is that all the original statements of polls for District 4 that was received by the Chief Elections Officer not to be made public, not to be given to the public, but to be shared with GCOM commissioners. All seven Portions around the horseshoe table must sit and see these are 2,300 plus original statements of poll that Mr. Lowenfield, in his capacity as Chief Elections Officer, received. We examine them, we talk about them, and we know that that is intact. So that motion was debated on and went to the, to the table. What was the vote? The three opposition nominated commissioners voted yes we want to see the statements of poll the three government commissioners and the chairman voted no i don't need to tell guyanese anything further guyanese are intelligent enough to judge from themselves why the chairman and the three government nominated commissioners don't want to see the original statements of poll, which is in the possession of the chief elections officer. Now, the issue at hand here with the statements of poll that were being requested is not to replace the recount. The fact that the commissioners are able to see the statements of poll in its original form gives them an understanding of what transpired and they could authenticate conduct of presiding officers, returning officers, and all the rest of it. Now, GCOM voted no because the chairman Retired Justice Claudette Singh voted along with Vincent Alexander and his group. And the chair has the deciding vote. And the chair has the deciding vote. So all of her positions that she would have voted on basically shows where she stands. On the particular matter. Yes. Now on the particular matter, she said no. GCOM in 2011 give to the media and the public the statements of poll. This motion was not asking for GCOM to give the media or GCOM to give the public. It is for Mr. Lowenfield to go to his office and pick up a bundle of statements of poll. Rem, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every commissioner must be able to have a chance to 
go through it, check to make sure they're properly signed, the numbers are there, if they want to do any additions, whatever. That's all. The media is not getting involved. The public is not getting involved. The chairwoman would have been able to see those statements of poll to look at the numbers. The question has to be asked, did the chairman and Mr. Lowenfield have a private meeting where she saw those statements of poll and knew that they differed from the declarations that were made by Mr. Mingo? And if she has such knowledge, why is it that she did not deal with that matter condignly since then? And why is she not wanting to see it? If there is wrongdoing, if there is an allegation, if things are being put to you that something is wrong, they are fake, numbers be declared from a spreadsheet and all the rest of it, we are going to a recount. Let us just see the originals. Let us be sure that they are in place. Why is she not wanting to see it? Or have she already seen it? And she knows the numbers and the figures and don't want to make that now official. So in terms of transparency, a GCON, the chairman says, I don't want to see statements of poll. The second motion that came was a, a proposal from the People's Progressive Party Civic Nominated Commissioners that the whole recount process be observed by either the audit office of Guyana or an audit form hired by GCOM. Everybody know the role of auditors. Right? You can have an accountant, but auditors check, verify, make sure systems are in place, the numbers are correct, and they'll be following the process. The re request was not for the audit office to do the recount or for an audit form to do the recount. The request is for them just to be there, accredit them as observers so that they could witness, they could participate, they could look at the tabulation, ensure, give comfort to the people of Guyana that everything is above board. In this recount process, we don't want another charade. Mr. Mingo sat in court and listened to the Chief Justice that he must put up every statement of poll on the screen and tabulate it and ascertain the number based upon that. He rushes down to High Street Kingston, puts up a bed sheet with some cardboard, with some kind of a projector, with, with petroleum jelly on the lens. Even Mr. Alexander said the imaging could have been better because the technology could have been approved and he rushed it through. So nobody could even be in check says, I complied, because remember the argument was substantial compliance. They made a mockery of the whole exercise. The request for the presence of the audit office, all right, even if Mr. Alexander and his group and the APN, you don't want the Auditor General, because the Auditor General writes about them, about how they overspend the money at Durban Park, and I'm sure the Auditor General will have to start writing soon about the money that has been spent on the Ocean View um, hotel and convention center, the Auditor General spoke about Sussex Street bond. So you think that the Auditor General is with the PPP because everything that the PPP have been saying to the people when the Auditor General writes his report and check, the world is saying that the PPP was correct. So you've done say the Auditor General is a mouthpiece of the PPP because he's finding exactly what the PPP say. You don't want the Auditor General office or the Audit office. Hire a private audit form. It went to the vote and what do you expect? To give comfort to the people of Guyana that a recount process will be fair above board with maximum transparency a mechanism to bring comfort to the people of Guyana was thrown out of the door by the three government commissioners with the support of the chairman of GCOM who voted no. The Guyanese people must ask themselves the question and answer it. And I know you know the answer. Why is it that GCOM don't want these kinds of scrutiny, transparent processes, and third parties to look 
and observe and understand what is taking place. So that went out the way. The next motion that went, which is I believe the one that concerns most Guyanese, and all Guyanese were looking for it, I'm sure you were looking for it in a while, the live streaming of yes. the recount. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you could remind your audience of some of the views that people were expressing about the live streaming. People felt comfortable that if this thing is live stream, I could sit in my home and I could be assured that everything is going well. We cannot have no more bingo, bingo, lingo. We could only have a strict compliance with the law. And even the international community supported that. Yes. They've, they've been asking for it. And having a live stream removes any doubt that any guy, any citizen, and even any international person that can tune in and watch that recount taking place. You don't have to say, oh, well, it's just a PPP saying X or Aknu saying Y. You can see what is going on right there. So even Aknu AFC supporters should have wanted a live stream because if this bad PPP and this bad Jagdio and the Jagdio people who want to storm G common, who want to manipulate the recount, who want to rig the elections like they are posting on their Facebook pages, I thought you would have wanted to see the live stream to ensure that the big bad PPP don't manipulate the system. I thought you would have wanted to see the live, the live stream to ensure the big bad Jadio and his PPP people and Irfan Ali and Nandalal and all of them who, who want to rig this election like you're writing on your post, you would have wanted to be able to sit there on your television, get your popcorn, get your nuts, eat your food and say, uh -huh, box number 402, finish. I see all them votes, that's good. 403 coming up. And you're taking off and you're going down and you're doing your own count in your own in your home and you're keeping an eye upon, upon uh, Claudette and her group and you're getting no mingo bingo lingo you're getting it straight mm -hmm. i would have expected that the chairman of gcom would have jumped to that and pr even involve private sector or international support with technology to facilitate that she said no. No. What is so wrong about this? Now, here what is the law that they are citing about uh, secrecy? secrecy. The secrecy of the ballot. Hogwash. I'm no lawyer, but I've learned enough to know what is the secrecy of the ballot. The secrecy of the ballot is to ensure that no one must know how one Anthony Edgel voted. So when I get a ballot paper and I go into the polling booth and I mark my X, by now all of you know I put my X next to the cups, it's no longer a secret. But if I don't want nobody to know who I voted for, that ballot paper goes into a box and nobody must be able to trace or identify a vote with a voter. How could counting paper violate the secrecy of the ballot? How could counting paper violate the secrecy? The night of the count, in every polling station, everybody saw the ballot and counted. At the recount, everybody got see the same paper and we got counted. Nobody will know how Miss Harris voted, how Claudette Singh voted, how Lowenfield voted, how Mingo voted, how Roxanne Myers voted, even though some people already know how they voted. Nobody could trace the army chief of staff vote or the police commissioner's vote to see how they voted or any military person or any nurse or any professional or any permanent secretary. Nobody's vote can be traced because you're having a live stream. All you're doing is picking up the envelope from the box that says APNU AFC, a Georgetown, South, South Georgetown box. APNU got 195 votes and PPP got 12. You clap for that. And you count APNU 195, PPP 12, some other party 1, 0, 0, and whatever. You put, could fill it back up. You fill up the statement of recount. Everybody's seeing it's so much of PPP, so much of thing. What is wrong with that? Nobody is saying who voted where. So I 
don't understand the misapplication of the law to say you're preserving the secrecy of the vote. It's not secrecy of the vote that is being protected here. It's some secret clandestine diabolic plan that is in place with this recount that they don't want the masses of the people to see. You see what, what's been happening in Guyana is that a few people get into a room, they observe what is happening, and then when they come out and speak, this one will say no, it's not so, this one will say no, it's so, and everybody could give their own spin on it. But when the people are seeing, nobody could fool the people. And I believe for too long, the people of Guyana have been fed with what people wanted them to hear. And it's time for transparency. Guyanese must be able to sit, observe, and see, and make their own conclusions. So there's no live streaming. We are told there can be some updates uh, at different times of the day, which means we will give the public information we think they should know. It's all controlled. It's all controlled. And that is what this no vote by the chairman and the government appointed commissioners mean. The people of Guyana will not be able to see and observe this process in a transparent manner. Whatever information the PRO of GCOM thinks that the people of Guyana should get and at what time they should get it, that is what will be coming out. So the chairman voted no for live streaming. The next resolution that went to the meeting yesterday, and this has been one that has been quite contentious. Low in fuel comes with his 156 days time frame. time frame. The PVPC put in a 10 days with 20 uh, working, stations. working stations showing how it could be done in the back and forth and the back and forth. All right. The site visits were completed. The COVID task force who were conveniently brought in to interfere with the constitutional body's work as against giving advice, making decisions to them. I know here, Mr. Alexander defending that it's not like that, is that they made decisions and the task force only gave guidelines. But we know differently. The PVPC commissioners amended their original 10-day work program and says, look, let's try to wrap this up in 14 days. What was the vote? No to 14 days. But we got to initially announce 25 days that could be reviewed in the first week. Let me tell you, Guyanese, what it essentially means. And some of us might be saying, well, if at least it's less than 156 days. This particular vote was to tell CARICOM and the international observers don't come here. Because I don't know which team of observers in this COVID-19 environment would come to Guyana to spend a month to watch GCOM count votes. This was making it extremely difficult for international scrutiny. This particular vote is of great concern to me. And this is my concern, it's considered belief. A two week time frame, persons leaving their homes, coming to Guyana, you walk with your necessary supplies, gear to protect yourself for a two week period, you know it's two weeks. Who wants to leave their home for 25 days and even when you leave for 25 days, when you get here, it is open-ended. Because in the first week, with the slow that things are going, you might be here for six weeks or seven weeks. There is no close, definite time frame for the record. 25 days initially, reviewable after the first week. And this is sending a signal that GCOM don't want scrutiny and I'm concerned I must tell you as a, as a citizen and as a candidate 
that presented myself to the polls at that March 2nd, 2020 elections, I am concerned about the positions that the chairman of GCOM is taking on matters like these. When you start learning something, it takes slow because you're now learning it. A recount of all ballots cast in Guyana is not something that you do every day. So if you want to use the force week speed to determine the completion date, that's not the real completion date. Because as you go along, things keep moving faster. And this is troubling. This long, open-ended process is dangerous for this state. This is providing opportunity for mischief. And I might be alone in my views concerning this. This is a setup. Because once you start going and you've got time and the staff of GCOM know you've got 25 days and you can go beyond 25 days, there is no hurry. There is no need for urgency. And every day could be a different problem and then you could end up finding that the whole recount process is stalled and scuttled because just like how you had the little moors and the ilks and kinds of, of, of that kind always seeking to interfere with something. Who knows what this is setting up for? And it was a clear case that the government never wanted a swift, transparent and credible recount and declaration. They are buying time for something. And I might be wrong. But people listening to me will be able to judge me if I was wrong or right. Because time is a great healer. And we're going to see what's going to happen during these 25 days. And I'm concerned that the chairman did not see the wisdom to bring this down and compress it. 25 days and reviewable in after the first week. What is that? That is an open-ended uh, issue. The next resolution that was brought to the commission was one that was essentially designed to ensure that GCOM's actions and the personnel involved in this recount don't discredit the process even before it starts. Let's take away all the people who we had issues with. Because there were a number of people we had issues with. You know, we, we heard in court, some miller started to prepare the spreadsheet in an affidavit. We heard about Roxton Myers' conduct, both at the Ashman's building Getting the police to put people out, her conduct at the Arthur Chown Convention Center, giving instructions to the police to get all the people out. So we know of the types of Roxanne Myers and Miller. Of course, Mingo Bingo Lingo, the whole world knows about him. We saw the conduct and Mr. Lowenfield's affidavit and the things that he is saying in his affidavit, contrary to what the commission should really be saying and positions that he's taking rather than being an arbiter and a, uh, rather than being a person who's neutral as the chief elections officer the positions that he's been taking are more promoting the side of the APNU AFC and protecting the fraud and the misdeeds that took place at the Ashman's building so that motion for the removal of all the staff who were fingered that could bring suspicion to the process and so on. Vanel, I think you would agree that that was a given, that no, 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 none of the, those staff should be used. I, I, I'm I, sure you think that way. And again, Bishop, that is something that the international observers have asked for. 
the OAS actually in their statement publicly asked that persons who cannot be impartial and have already been proven to have partisan behavior be removed and excluded from being anywhere close to this recount process? Well, I didn't think that that was a matter for debate. I would have thought that everybody who's fair, honest, decent, people who uphold integrity, people who want the good for Guyana and the interests of Guyana, would say, let's get a recount. Move Mingo, move Rocks and Myers. Bring in some other people, it's counting votes and recording. Why, why is it important that they have to be there? Why is it important that people who are tainted where they're under the cloud of suspicion. Why is it that the chairman can't open her eyes and see that that is trouble you're playing with? If you put your hands in fire, you will get born. Why can't she see if somebody could prepare a spreadsheet and they're calling out numbers that are different to what everybody has got in a statement of poll? You will put such a person again to count and tabulate votes a second time? It's insanity. To do the same thing over and over and expect different results. So, how did the chairman vote for the removal of these tainted persons? I would have thought that Mr. Gadraj, Gunrad, sorry, Mr. Says Gunraj, uh, made a mistake when he reported to the public at the media conference that the chairman voted no. I thought it was, a, honestly, I thought it was a mistake that he made. So I immediately contacted, I'm not a commissioner, Ms. Bibi Shadi, to verify that Godraj was not making a mistake because in my own understanding, I couldn't believe that a judge, a judge, a person who sat for years as a judge and then a judge in the court of appeal who understand the dynamics of the Guyanese society but say no that's all right not a problem there are no place for returning officers so Mr. Mingo might not be around but the others uh, it's all right they're staff you know what she actually said there Mr. Lowenfield do your thing this vote is giving permission to the chief elections officer Who's responsible for staff? Who did not discipline any staff? Who did not mount an investigation into any inquiry of fraud? Who did not bring out his statement supposed to compare with Mingo's declaration to see if Mingo was right or he was wrong? Who did not intervene when Myers was putting out commissioners from the GCOM Region 4 office of the Ashman's building? Who did not do anything within his power to stop this nonsense from getting to where it is? He, he's not allowed to put his staff, his favorite staff, his staff that he's comfortable with, knowing that you already have a rigging cabal in GCOM, aided and abetted by the government-nominated commissioners and the government itself who will be the beneficiary of a rig. The chairman voted to allow Lowenfield to situate staff where he wants them and to use whatever staff that he would like because you're not removing staff. What nonsense is this? Is this the Guyana that I live in? Somebody needs to slap me, pinch me, let me wake up to the reality that this is Guyana. Where is justice? Where is righteousness? Where is ensuring things are that are above board? All of that out of the window and our country is in crisis in determining the accuracy of results. And you're putting people who in the first instance got us into this problem, they're going to still be a part of the process. I hope that by my protestations and our protestations across the country in the international community that this thing be overturned and some people of themselves should recuse themselves and get on the system. 
If Roxanne Myers is such an upstanding woman, she should say to the Chief Elections Officer and the Chairperson of GCOM, I'd like to be recused for this recount because I would not like to be accused of any wrongdoing. They're already saying that I was high-handed and all the rest of it. Say your name. Come out the process, Roxanne Myers. If Miss Miller, who did some spreadsheet when Mingo was sick, she should be able to say, look, I get caught up in this thing and I know nothing about it. I don't want to be caught up. Please leave me out. Louis Field of himself should have been able to say, look, CEO, you might need to put in some temporary mechanism to bring comfort to other people of Guyana. I will provide all of the logistical support and all the rest of it, but I will have nothing to do with the ballots and the boxes and the counting because this thing got trouble. People are viewing me in a particular way. Where is that kind of decency that don't happen anymore? Why is the insistence of Alexander and his group that these people must remain in place? People who are already compromised. Is it now to create a bigger problem in the recount? So we got to watch and see what is going on. Well, the next motion that was put had to do with the tabulation and the process of tabulation of how the statements of poll of recount, statements of recount will be tabulated. And according to what we learned is that it was a very detailed process because we don't want what happened at Ashton's building during the tabulation happen again. And in all fairness, the, the chairman voted yes on a number of the steps. And in that whole process, she voted no on one. And I want to bring to the Guyanese people attention, which is the one that she voted no. We were asking that in the event of a pause, in the inputting process, people are inputting into the computers in the spreadsheet after the statements of recount come, and you have a pause, whether it, let's, let's say it's a pause for sanitization, a pause for lunch, or we're breaking for the night to start back. That at that pause, that the parties or representatives will be provided with where we are in terms of numbers. So if you're inputting and we input 123 boxes and we're taking a pause, let's get the tally for the 123 boxes. I have my slip tomorrow morning when we come back. Everybody's, we, on, the everybody's on the same page. Give us a printout. Do you know they're saying no? Why? We won't make a fall sick. 421 boxes were already um, verified. So everybody was on the same page. Be between the time that he falls sick and the starting back of the process, a whole different ball game started. Numbers started going left, right, and center. We had a declaration that was fraudulent. That is why we are here. Safeguard the process. Every time there's a pause, it's lunch break. So everybody shutting down for one hour. We print out. Table so and so, table so and so. This is where we are. So we know we got figures. And everybody look at your sheet, pick me sheet, everybody sheet saying the same thing. So we start back at one o'clock. We started at 123,062 for afternoon. And we're starting with 178,900 something for PPPC. Three for this party, 12 for that, whatever. We're starting back on the same page. Now, that no vote of not giving representatives of contesting parties a tabulation at the time of the pause is an open door for mischief that have to be heavily scrutinized during this recount process. Now, the other motion that went was that you start with District 1 and District 4 simultaneously like was agreed and that you continue with the remaining districts only after the completion of the said District 1 and District 4 
because we are starting with District 1 and District 4. As I understand it, our position is we start counting District 1, we start counting District 4. If District 1 got 99 boxes and we finish District 1, everybody join up together and we knock out District 4. And then we go District 2, District 3, District 5, District 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, District 4 is the region that had the contention. They have voted no to that. You know what I mean? You could already count out all nine districts. And District 4, where the problem arose, ain't finished counting, and it didn't finish counting at all. There was no problems in the nine, nine, nine districts. The problem is at District 4. Let's get through District 4 and then go on to the others. But if you have a situation where you've counted one and four still going, and four going, taking you on their time, two finish, come, four still going, three come and finish, four still going, five come and finish, four still going, six come and finish, four still going, seven come and finish, four still going, eight come and finish, four still going, nine come and finish, four still going, ten come and finish, four still going. That's what happened in the original situation. All nine other regions made declarations. It was only four that was outstanding when the problem arose. Because the mischief is in the boxes of District 4. The chair voted again with the government side that you can keep counting other regions while District 4 is not completed. So we're back to square one. Only God in heaven knows what will happen. Because it looks like the wicked is being set for mischief and for real trouble during this recount process. And the last resolution uh, th that was um, put forward is that the declaration of the election results of electoral district number four by returning officer claimant Mingo made on the 13th day of March 2020 and the consequential report pre prepared and submitted to the commission by the chief elections officer Keith Lewin for pursuant to the provisions of section 96 of the representation of the People's Act chapter 103 be set aside, be vote annulled and rescinded by the Guyana Elections Commission. We would have thought that if you're going to recount, which supersedes that fraudulent process, nullify that and let us honestly go to a recount. What was the eventual um, decision that was made? Of course, you know Mr. Alexander and his team, who would have already said all of those declarations are illegal. Mm -hmm. And if they are illegal, they are hoping to use those declarations sometime or another. And it is my belief, I could be wrong, that the intent of the APNU AFC is to break up the recount process, match it up, it can't continue. As that you are, and force the commission to go back using those declarations the Mingo Bingo Lingo declarations. That is the intent of the cabal. There could be no way that the AP and UAFC can win these elections by a free, fair, and transparent recount based upon the statements of poll that we know we have and all the other parties have. So there have to be some intention of keeping those declarations alive. So that when they finish scuttling, breaking up, making confusion, challenging, creating mayhem or whatever it is they have in mind. The country is left in limbo and they're going to move a motion to go back to those declarations that were in the Alexander Storm legally made. We would have thought that the chair would have seen the light, vote with us to squash those declarations. She says she's holding it in abeyance. The country will judge. 
the citizens will determine why when you have such a sinister plot why when you are seeing such a transparent ploy of foisting a government upon the people through fraudulent declarations you of yourself said you are going for a recount because the whole issue is out there why not void it no why holding it in abeyance just in case my understanding is let's leave it there just in case we need it well alexander this group will need it because once it is alive they will do everything within their power to make sure that is used and not the numbers of the recount because then you will have two numbers legal declarations that alexander called which includes mingo declaration and Lowenfield's report and the numbers coming out of the recount and when they realize the numbers from the recount is really damaging you, you they will not allow the recount to complete that is my suspicion once you have these numbers alive everything will be done by the pnc led ap and ufc to squash to discredit the recount even if it means blaming it on the ppp even if it means blaming it on the ppp they will find a mechanism because the recount in a transparent and credible manner will expose the rigging the extent of the rigging and those who were involved in the rigging and i thought the chair of gcom would have recognized that and intervened and did something about it there again so here we are that is the reality of where we are we're going for a recount we, we, we i don't know if caricom is going to tell the chairman we are ready to come in after 25 days and then the chairman of gcom will come back and says well caricom is unable to come for 25 days and then they go to a meeting and the, G, the alexander Nils group says we are going ahead with the recount because this is not a caricom recount this is a gcom recount mm -hmm. if caricom can come uh we still going ahead with our recount so that's one layer of scrutiny out of the way and then the international observers start saying well we can't be here for 25 days in a covid 19 environment and they said to hell with you this is gcom we're a sovereign state because that's the kind of language that was being used already by the apnu afc people keep out of our business let whoever locally there and we we, we have our um jj and be um, to change the narrative in Washington and we'll be putting out a new narrative let's get the come going this is the GCOM control process and the court has already ruled that GCOM must not surrender their right to any other group so they don't have to be there once the parties are there and then you have the mingo bingo types going ahead again I'm not sure of where we're going with this but I will put faith I will put faith, but I'm very, very cautious with the transparency mechanisms thrown out of the window and the way the chairman voted and indicated to the world what are her principles that she's going into this recount with. I am troubled. Bishop, we've run out of time and I just want to take the opportunity to thank you for being here. Um, we're happy that you were able to go through all of the motions that the PPP commissioners put forward and explain it to the viewers so that they understand the reasons that those motions were put forward and the logics behind those motions that we put forward. It was done in the interest of the Guyanese populace to ensure that you can receive transparent and credible recount. I mean, we, we wanted and we were hoping for transparent and credible elections, but what we got was blatant rigging and attempts to commit electoral fraud in front of the entire world. And so we came up with with these motions that we our commissioners would have tabled at the Ghana Elections Commission to try to safeguard the recount process to avoid what would have already occurred after March 2nd elections with fraudulent declarations and attempts to rig the elections in favor of the APNU AFC so that you, the electorate, can have your will respected and the government that you elected assume office, a legitimate government put in place in the shortest possible time 
and with credible and transparent results. Bishop, thank you for going through the motions and uh, explaining to the viewers. Viewers, thank you for tuning in. That's all the time that we have. Take care, stay safe, goodbye.